I'm Joseph Doyle. I'm one of the reproductive endocrinologists in Rockville uh, with Shady Grove Fertility. And today we're going to talk about PCOS. So PCOS is, it stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. And really what it comes down to is it's an ovulatory disorder. So it's a person, instead of having that regular like 30 day cycle, um, they're somewhere on the long end of that. And they can be as, you know, it can be 40 days or it can be uh, four months, or there's people who don't even have a period once a year. The irregular cycles are like kind of a cornerstone of the whole thing. So it's very, very unlikely to have PCOS if you have a cycle length that's shorter than 35 days. It tends to be people who are running on the long end of it. Um, so that's one of the criteria. There are some tests that you need to also do around PCOS because you have to exclude other stuff that causes irregular cycles, like there's thyroid disorders and people can have um, problems with prolactin levels. So there are other things that look like PCOS but actually aren't PCOS, like you would fix a thyroid disorder. So you need to exclude those things too. In the whole scheme of things, PCOS is a very, very good prognosis group uh, when it comes to conceiving. So if it's really just a matter of if it's an ovulatory disorder, and so the big challenge is just getting an egg to come out in the first place, once you get these folks to ovulate, their pregnancy rates are generally really good each time they try. Everybody's going to be kind of their own little different picture with PCOS. And as I even mentioned, there's, there's people who have slightly long cycles and there's people who have really long cycles. So we try to go about this taking in the whole big picture of it. First you try to address just will making this person ovulatory alone be enough to do it? And, um, and you would want to give that some time to work because if you make them ovulatory um, you would think about well what's the average time to pregnancy generally for that person anyway? So you just want to give them some chances to get to that point. Now, if that doesn't work, okay, then we might consider broadening out the testing to see is there anything else that we might not have picked up initially and we want to dig into that some more. Um, and then that might lead us in slightly different directions. But because this group generally does so well in general, um, you kind of like slowly work your way up. Because our goal is always, what's that easiest little uh, step that ought to get them a very good chance of pregnancy? Low-tech treatment works really well for women with PCOS. It's part of our stepwise approach to care. And fortunately, with women with PCOS, because their egg quality tends to be very good, once you just simply get them to ovulate, which can be as simple as using pills to do that, they tend to have very good conception rates. As we consider what's the best treatment option for uh, for a couple. We always are going to start with what's the simplest thing that will get us there and and that's kind of demonstrated. If you look at all the treatment that we do here, about half of all the treatments that we do tend to be pretty simple, straightforward things. People have oftentimes heard about the fancy treatments like IVF, um, but that's it's, it, but half the time that we're doing treatments, it tends to be really simple things.